Hey there guys, Pajama Prepper here, KC1CWP. In this video, I'm making a handheld portable Morse code practice key. Essentially a smaller compact version of the one I made that I had plugged into a power supply. And this one costs about 15 bucks or so to make, maybe a little less than that, unless you have to go buy the tools. But what you're going to need for this is a drill. You're going to need a 4 by 2 by one plastic project box from Radio Shack or wherever. You're going to need a 9-volt battery, a 9-volt battery holder. You can get most of this stuff at Radio Shack, or all of it at Radio Shack. A little uh, push-button switch. I can't. This was one of the uh, spare ones I had. You could use a bigger one if you want. I'm just going to use this one here. It'll focus. So you th I'm just going to use this one. And then also, if you want to make sure you can match up the drill bits correctly to the right size for what you need, for that switch especially, you can use a micrometer to get the proper diameter correct for there. And also, you might, you're might you going to need two different sizes of drill bits. One for the holes on the buzzer here. This is just a little uh, 3 to 20 volt DC piezo buzzer. It's the part number and everything. That's going to cost you uh, $3.99 at Radio Shack. Also a different one for the hole here. And oh, and also you're going to need one of these for the battery. Alright, so first I've already drilled the hole for the 9-volt battery holder. And you're going to need an appropriate sized little uh, pan head bolt or screw. Preferably a bolt and a nut. And you're going to put that on the back end here. Okay, so we've got the 9-volt battery connector installed. Now this is why it's tricky. Let me show you here. Because this is made to hold little like uh, PCB boards and whatnot, there's going to be a tiny gap between this and the essentially wall of the box. And you can use one of these, put it up in there, but then you're going to need to cut it because you're going to need to put the battery in there and you need that screw or that bolt to fit flush so that you'll have the battery and it'll hold it good. So what I'm gonna do after is I'm gonna take a saw blade, I'm just gonna cut that there. And then also, I uh, actually I might make it a little longer and use a, a um, one of those cap nuts, like the nuts that have the rounded off of dome on it to cover that. So I'd use a longer one, fit it through there, tighten it down and that'll hold. And then you can put your battery in there and then attach this. If you want, you can snip the leads here to shorten them, so as you can tell, they are fairly long. Now you could, if you had a, a box that was higher, put the battery uh, holder there. The problem is that it would sit too high and will not allow the lid to properly close onto the case. So now what I'm going to do is drill the two holes for the buzzer here, and then I'm also gonna drill the hole for the switch. To match up the proper drill bit, it's very simple. All you need to do is take your buzzer, and then take a drill bit, and then you want to just see if it'll fit into there. Uh, if it'll fit in the hole without a problem, therefore it's the right size. And you want it to be not too... I usually go at the smaller size from the hole, that way I can get the screw in there to tighten down very well into the plastic, but you don't want it too small because you risk cracking the ABS. Alright, so you got the holes drilled for the two screws, or two bolts, excuse me, that will hold the buzzer in place. I just got to get the, uh, I'm just going to Radio Shack, I don't have the right size nut for it, so I got to go pick up some of those. After I uh, finish doing this, I'll just go pick those up. But this is going to sit at an angle there because it needs the room for the battery to fit in and the wires, I'm going to run those around the edge and connect it to the uh, switch and then to the battery. So we're, now we're gonna drill the hole for the switch. All right, so we got that in there. Now what I had to do was drill the hole uh, about, I don't know, not a whole lot smaller, but it, the, uh, the switch itself measures like 0.29, I think it was, in diameter. Let's see, so. It was like 0.26. I drilled a hole with this drill bit, which was 0.25. And then I had to use a round file to, yeah, it's 0.24. I 
And then I just had to use my round file here to get the hole a little wider and then just thread that in through there. Now we're gonna put the bezel on it. And that's gonna sit up here, right above the buzzer in enough room for the battery and everything so nothing is directly touching. And now let's uh, start wiring it. All right, so because my soldering iron isn't really working, I need to get a, a new tip for it, <laughs> as you can see. Um, what I do is I take some heat shrink and I uh, strip the wire down a bit, loop it over the connector. And what I do is I put some heat shrink over, bring it down over the wire as it's twisted over the little tabs. And then I uh, take my heat gun and I heat shrink the connectors onto the, or the wire onto the connectors. So I'm going to do the same thing with some heat shrink, connecting the negative to the negative. And then we're going to hook this up in there. It's very simple. Again, I could put an LED in there if I wanted to make it cool or something. But it's uh, then we're going to test it out. All right, so I'm going to show you here what I'm talking about. So we got that connection there. Keep it about 8 inches or so away. Keep it on low power as well and just gradually let it. Heat the heat shrink up. Plastic on the case is going to get hot as well. I'm just going to have to give it a minute to kind of cool down a bit. And because these two wires are just uh, twirled together, I want to make sure I get this to be a solid heat shrink. I think that should be good. As you can see, it's uh, tightened down towards bulged against the... Uh, the wires as they're connected in there. I'm going to give that a uh, minute to let it cool. Let's get this in. Right. All right. This is pretty, uh, yeah, it gets pretty warm. Just going to let that cool a bit, and then we're going to hook it up to the battery and test it out. All right, so as you can see, it's a tight little fit in there with everything. I might have to turn the battery back over so that's not under some stress, but uh, let's give it a try. Perfect. Really simple, about uh, 30 minutes to make, given that I had to keep recharging the battery a bit. These Harbor Freight batteries, I don't know, they're not holding the charge as well as I thought they would. They're a couple of years old, so. But um, I'm going to drill a couple of speaker holes as well, because it's a little muffled when you uh, have the case closed. But now the radio shack to get the uh, nuts and everything for the screws. And perfect pocket Morse code test be your practice key whatever you want to call it in any case thanks for watching god bless america seven threes and have a great night